murders jumped year over year from about 319 to 469. What do you mean year That's over year? The two years that I just Year listed? over year, as in from 2020 to 2021. That would be a year yes, over year yes. increase. That's <laughs> so it's a, like, like colloquially, anyone uses year over year to literally refer to two years, right? Like, look, all these years, the murders have gone up. It's been two years. Yeah, years, plural, you know. Oh, yeah, uh-huh is a dramatic increase and it's the largest since i believe 2010 the greatest year over year increase of all time in the city of new york by the way but it's all but the way back to 2010 again. numbers it's down yeah, it's down this compared is... to the increase but it's not down compared to 2019. this was a once in a lifetime pandemic where people's desperation and their mental health was severely harmed um people were out of work and that kind of desperation leads to more crime that's the reality of how crime works poverty um, leads to crime this i would is, imagine this that... me, why do you think uh 25 people got shoved in front of trains last year I don't know, dude. Well, I, that's a legitimate question. You're saying that. Uh, no, notice how he doesn't engage with what Emma just said and just completely pivots to another thing because right wingers will never accept crime as like a sociological phenomena because if they did, they would have to acknowledge that civic policy could change it. The implicit suggestion that people like Tim Pool want to push is that it's a like race or degeneracy thing, that people have become degenerate or that it's like black people or whatever. But on an explicit level, it's like framed through the personal responsibility thing where it's like, oh, well, people are just bad because they're bad. So when you're talking about poverty leading to crime, Crime, like what is that based on because after Numbers. prohibition was repealed existing data. during the great depression crime fell during the great recession people with your line of thinking thought we would see a crime spike nationwide it didn't happen you could actually look at the crime wave if you wanted to pull it up that didn't occur and that was the largest recession in the history of this country since the great depression so what we've seen throughout american history remember the real answer is that income inequality increases crime it's not people being poor and it's not people being rich it's poor people and rich people being next to each other it's inequality that causes crime because inequality leads to divisions. It leads to people fostering negative sentiment, hatred, antipathy, poor judgment, ill thought. When people are different from you, it's easier to blame them for problems you're experiencing. And sometimes you're right to when it comes to like blaming the rich for a lot of social problems. Rich people are also like targets for theft when you're poor. If you're poor, stealing from other poor people is often less like worthwhile because they're because they're poor. Um, yeah, this is backed up in data. It's pretty straightforward is poverty not leading to crime what we actually see is the opposite that crime drives areas into poverty we look at store closures across the country due to the fact that we have shoplifting that leads to decaying in the neighborhoods when people <laughs> abandon the neighborhoods and you see this blight that has a psychological impact on people and that drives people to commit these crimes i mean you're working backwards from the no you're actually working backwards wait, 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 but no no poverty clearly this is a very simple concept leads to something like shoplifting why would someone shoplift based on the personal pathology they're shoplifting because they're desperate not necessarily like so we have a lot yeah. of lax shoplifting laws in california for example so and what they find is we have a lot of organized retail theft because there's no consequences for it that's profit for, for I mean, instance not... there people are trying to make money well so and so... they're desperate and we have we have untold levels of income inequality in this country well since is it income late, inequality since or since poverty the late 70s 900 percent. that's the increase in ceo pay versus 12 yeah. percent for the working class in this country that's you don't think bad. that that leads to levels of desperation I so wait wait I, is look... income inequality the cause or is poverty the cause because those are two different things I mean, they go hand in hand. They really don't. Yes, they do. What? They really don't? There's, there's no correlation whatsoever between income inequality and poverty, actually. Many, there are many such cases of income inequality skyrocketing in a fashion which has a stark division between the ultra wealthy and people who are simply upper middle class. That's a real thing that definitely happens in the real world. AJW being a dipshit, what else is new? Yeah, well, he's been pretty stupid, like, in every engagement I've ever had with him, so it's not surprising. Is he is he uh, hired by Tim now? Is, is, is he work for the show? One of the most shoplifted I, um, items from Walmart is baby food. Yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, I'm sure that they're just uh, doing it for the TikTok clout. This is another one of those, like, visible exemptions things where, like, overwhelmingly people shoplift because they're desperate and need stuff. But then, like, you'll get a couple high-profile cases of TikTokers who shoplift a bunch of makeup because it's, they want to brag about it. And then uh, that gets the headlines. So it's like, oh, shoplifters are just doing it for clout. Like, yeah, all the baby food they're stealing for clout. Yeah. The philosophy behind mass incarceration is pretty simple. What you're trying to do is incapacitate criminals because the same criminals are often reoffending. You brought up shoplifting earlier. You can actually pull up an article to find out that the same 300 people in New York City represent a third of the shoplifting arrests total for a single year. Probably because this they're is incredibly because they're impoverished offenders. and they need to find a way to actually sustain their livelihoods in this country. That, we don't I mean, have that's, a... that, but that's 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 put a very good way. That's that's, yeah. that's, that's phrased very well. To no, me. that's that's whoa, whoa, hold on. 
That makes it sound like there's some kind of broader social issue when people are constantly getting arrested for shoplifting food or whatever, that the way you phrased it made it seem as though there's something to think about here other than just criminals are evil. So let's think about this a different way. Maintain their livelihoods. Well, so, no, I mean, I, no, their life is a better way to maintain Sure, sure, it. but like, I, I guess my point is, some of them certainly are desperate. But yeah. when you see videos of a guy like shoveling stuff into a garbage bag, that's not desperation. But again, this is what you do to why would him. That, wait, why would that not be des wait, why would that not be desperation? Also, like furthermore, the most desperate people are the ones who are more likely to get caught shoplifting, probably, right? Like the kind of people whose lives are in tatters are probably the ones with the least to lose and are therefore the ones who would be the less, I don't know, like I feel like to be the ones who are the least savvy about shoplifting. Because like you you go in there, because if if a person if like a like a Beverly Hills trust fund kid is shoplifting for TikTok clout, they're not going to go in there with a garbage bag and start shoveling like cough medicine into it and run out because that'd be really dumb. They're going to contrive some over elaborate like purse sweater, you know, shenaniganry to get out of there. Like it, they're, they're going to put thought into it. It's just so telling that Tim cannot fathom of shoplifting as something that might be caused by structural inequality. How so much idea, money do you want to spend on jails in New York City? As much as it takes. So just warehousing people what? before they're convicted of anything. Well, it, again, it's not warehousing everybody, but if you have a propensity to reoffend, I think judges should be able to have judgment. It's kind of in the name and assess these people and hold them. So you just want to give it to the judgment of the judges. And it doesn't yes, I would like the judges to have judgment. Yes. OK, but this guy's a fucking Nazi. They're all fucking Nazis. Yeah. Again, like this is why, because you get honed in on these like hyper distinctive because right now we're talking about this in reference to like a hypothetical group of 300 repeat offending shoplifters and it's like if you look in reality right like if you look at we already spend billions and billions and billions and billions on our police and our prisons and we have worse outcomes than like every other country now the reason people like tim pool and the conservatives who follow him believe this is because of black people like that's the implication why do we have to spend so much money on our police and prisons? Why do we have so many people in prison but still have so much crime? It's because of like racial minorities. That's always the answer they gesture to. You know, uh, in, in terms of like actual sociological causes, it might be because this country fucking sucks um, and all these problems kind of like reify and um, re exacerbate the uh, severity of themselves to begin with if you just approach them like nails to be hammered. 90% of the stop and frisks that were done were, by the way, they didn't find anything, but 90% targeted black and brown people. If you ask me if I'm in favor of just expanding stop and frisk. To be clear, this literally, like his only thing is race, science, and criminology. That's it. The only thing this guy talks about or cares about or quote unquote studies is reasons why it's okay for black people to get arrested more. That's actually his entire thing. 90% of the stop and frisks came up with nothing. True, but the point was to so, deter say, the say carrying of doing, firearms. Say, have you done well, illegal drugs in your life? Uh, maybe. I just, I just I have, I have. <laughs> no, but that's exactly the point. I could have been stopped and frisked and I could have gone to prison or I could have been held if I had a little bit less money in Rikers indefinitely until my trial came because a cop just decided, hey, I'm going to stop and frisk you, but they wouldn't do that to me because I'm a white woman. All right, that's nice. Well, but me, anyway, it's just, about shooting. That, that's that's nice. But let's like continue with my my race science. You, and the point of the program, no, and this is shaded quite literally to deter people from carrying illegal firearms. And, and, and absolutely and I'm gonna, not about it. 100% is. Are you in favor of gun control? Um, <laughs> so See, again, this is what I mean. He only cares about arresting black people. He doesn't actually care about like the laws being enforced. If if, if he, he, you know, he might want like black people to be able to, or like people broadly to be able to carry firearms however they want walking around. But if it's an excuse you can use to arrest black people, that's what he's about. That's all he cares about. It's so transparent. Uh, have you used illegal drugs? Oh, maybe. Well, do you even care about gun control? Uh, nah, nah, yeah. Uh, but do you? But like, if black people do either of those things, like they should totally be thrown to Rikers, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The idea that the police can decide to arbitrarily stop people because they might be carrying a firearm violates the Second and Fourth Amendments. Well, again, stop and frisk is completely unconstitutional. Well, that's why Fourth Amendment was in my mind. Well, again, it's it's it, you're supposed to stop, question, and frisk, and usually no, no. it's based on reasonable suspicion. And they're supposed that, what, to I'm bearing arms. Bullshit. Yeah, cops totally exercise reasonable discretion with stop and frisk. Yeah, that's definitely how that worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Yeah, cops famously known for not inventing a reasonable suspicion based on anything that the courts will back them up on. You know, I smelled weed. Did they? Well, it, it's not provable either way. So, yeah. Notice how he's not saying the standard should be probable cause. No, he's not. Again, he goes with reasonable suspicion rather than probable cause. And even then, the idea that reasonable suspicion has ever been a threshold that stops police officers from doing whatever they want is just ludicrous. You know, he wants a police state for black and brown people. This is U.S. murder, right? So New York City's broken window policing has nothing to do with it. This is the entirety of the country. Mm -hmm. This could be one of two things. We, uh, when, when the, the lead gasoline, that was that, what, 80s, right? We I got, believe so, yeah. We were getting rid of and it. And the mm -hmm. last truck, I think for trucks, it was the 90s. But this also coincides with one of the, if not the largest economic expansion, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that now because who knows how, how you define it with, with the pandemic and all that stuff. But we had a, a massive uh, uh, economic boom in the 90s. So this would interestingly correlate with the idea that as people started to get more things, like they started to, their lives started to improve, crime, murder rates started to drop dramatically. Yeah, and, and I would say that there was, that was a temporary kind of sugar high based on neoliberal policies of Reagan and uh, uh, Clinton, where there was a lot of money that was um, released back into the public because of massive tax cuts. I mean, we can talk about confiscatory taxation if you'd like. And Also, just to be clear, because um, I took criminology classes and this was something that was talked about quite often. The exact reason for the drop in the crime rate in, through the early 90s and onward is a subject of massive debate. There are strong pieces of evidence towards some things, but it's like a ton of things all coming together. Um, there are like a wide range of factors that had varying levels of influence, and it's difficult to know to what extent they actually did and, and, and whether or not some stuff is being overinflated. I am willing to admit that broken windows policing, the S the, the skyrocketing budgets of police departments and the skyrocketing number of police people we incarcerate, that probably did bring the crime rate down a bit because a lot of crimes are committed in like ultra poor areas by a small group of people, either by gang members or people who are like super desperate or people who are just repeat criminals. And a benefit of aggressive policing can be that these like super repeat offenders are more likely to get like uh, taken. This was like the um, racist super predator thing that Hillary Clinton was on about, right? Of course, the problem is, is that like any increase in policing and jailing that is meant to target like a specific uh, like sub demographic of people is then going to go on to like, in this case, you know, massively escalate the number of people that we arrest, right? It's It's like, there was stuff regarding the drug war, the change in the use of like crack cocaine. There's so much went into these changes. You know what I mean? Overall, in terms of like crime, the country's very safe compared to how it used to be. However, I think that the positive influence of broken windows policing was heavily overstated. I think it had some positive influence, but with a lot of associated negatives. And I think it's very possible for us to go back and look through it and go like, okay, we can do better than this. And there are tons of reforms that are like common sense shit that criminologists have been screaming about for decades that police won't do because police want to masturbate while remembering the times that they brutalized and raped and tortured the uh, people of color that they had um, uh, complete unrestricted control over. reasonable suspicion.